Well, good morning, everyone. Thomas Montgomery with IIMFL and Smart Money Alliance. It is a beautiful Monday morning, July 12th, 2021. It's 7.59 a.m. Central. We get together with our distribution partners most weekday mornings at this time, just a minute or so before 8 a.m. Central. And we have two primary types of distribution partners. I'm sharing my screen here if all goes well with you. We have our affiliates to become an affiliate, free and easy on the career page information here. So good scripting training we had just last week, but a number of YouTube videos that would uh, get you prepared, but free and easy and click the gray box. It'll create a landing page for you that looks like this. And then all you do is help people qualify. You don't sell them anything. You just help them see if they qualify for the, the program. And so we've covered that. Our leadership team is really composed of our white label partners. We added seven white label partners this morning. Now that's a little bit of a misrepresentation because we were closed over the weekend, but technically we did add seven this morning. So we are on a, a torrid pace of growing our white label partners because many feel that it's, it's the ideal role. What does it cost to become a white label partner? Zero. What type of support and resources do you receive? Significant, right? We have Scott Stroud, our, our chief marketing officer, and he's officially introduced to you. CMO is, is, is the acronym here in the second training video. He'll help you generate leads. He'll help you convert leads. He'll help cr create drip marketing campaigns because we all know multiple touches are important. He'll help you uh, get the, the website set up if you need a website to put uh, to automate things. Uh, so the, the resources are great. You don't pay anything to become a white label partner. You get to control what the clients pay. You get to control their terms and conditions. You really manage the client process. We've really yet to have anyone come back and say, wow, the white label model is not ideal. It can be a side gig, it can be full time. We have a variety of, of people in terms of how much time they're putting into it. We mentioned that we really our first full month of having the white label program in operation was June last month, June 2021. We had several of you that enrolled, converted, and we'll describe conversion in a second, but enrolled slash converted over 40 in just your first month. And I think uh, both of them will probably likely double that amount in their second month in July. To, you know what, what a white label partner is trying to do really isn't on the front end much different than what our affiliates are trying to do. What a white label partner is trying to do, and, and what I, I'm just bringing this screen up here, is, is you're trying to see if the prospect will qualify to be able to get at least $100,000. And that's, that's guaranteed. And there's no upfront cost. Well, again, for our access to capital clients, the, this is what the landing page looks like. On the white label side, it won't have any of our branding because white label means it's branded to you, but Scott can help you either set up your terms and conditions that client, your terms and conditions that clients agree to either online, or you can just use DocuSign or Adobe. And of course we provide you template agreements that you can use in part or whole. But so when we're talking about a conversion in the white label context, what that means is that you have gone out, you've connected with someone and they have decided that they wanna move forward. They want to raise at least $100,000. And again, you control what their performance fee is and refundable deposit, you're controlling the terms consistent with whatever you contract with them probably using these templates. But the point is, once you submit the client to us, and this is where all of our white label partners submit right here. So granted, if you're wanting to have your own landing page and automate the sequence, Scott can work with you on that. But regardless of, of how you're getting the client to commit to your terms and conditions, it's here that you're submitting the client to us. So this is letting us know that we need to set up the client. 
So, and that's described. So what that means is once you submit someone in here, and then of course, you know, you're putting your name here because we have multiple referral partners, multiple white label partners specifically. So you'll submit the client in here and then we'll pick it up and then we're going to set them up, which means we're gonna send you an email that will uh, restate their name and email just so we all know who we're talking about. We'll get them set up on live plan, which we pay for, you don't have to pay for. And that's the cloud-based software to use their, uh, to create their business plan and financial projections. And we'll also create a Dropbox folder for them. So you're gonna get that email and now that client is set up in our system because you submitted them. So they're, they're a conversion. So once they convert, and, and we're going to talk money here. So if you're zoning out on me a little bit, you'll want to tune in because this is going to get really relevant very quickly. Once they have signed with you, and again, you do that however you want. If you need Scott's help, he can help you. But then you submit them to us. Once you sign them, now a promise has been made between you and them. So when they agree to your contract or terms and conditions, however you want to phrase it, so then, because an agreement is, is what two or more parties, we'll keep it simple, what two parties in our, our model have agreed to do. So you've agreed to help them improve their financial literacy. And we have the whole curriculum here, turnkey, ready to go. And you've also helped them, agreed to help them raise capital. And so that is stated in your agreement with them. Again, you can use this in whole or, or in part. And then what they've promised to do is to pay you. Now, I can't give you a general answer how much they've promised to pay you, because as I mentioned, you control the client pricing. So, so I'm going to make an assumption right now that you're going to use our standard pricing. You don't have to. But with that, so if, if they agree to the terms and conditions or agreement between you and them and you use their standard pricing, then they've promised to pay you $2,500 as a refundable deposit after their first capital raise. There's no upfront cost. And then they've agreed to pay you a performance fee based upon the amount of capital raised. Our standard is 6% after they've raised that capital. So there's no upfront cost. So what do you know? And this is, again, this is gonna get really key in just about a minute or two. So what does that mean? So each time a client signs up with you through the white label program, you can go to your accountant or you can go to your QuickBooks or your spreadsheet, however you track your money, and you can put in an accounts receivable for $8,500. So let's, let's go through that. So let's say that I'm the white label partner and I've got uh, Leo. And so I've talked to Leo. Leo uh, wants to, to work with me to raise capital. I've got Leo contracted in whatever way, uh, via Adobe or, or DocuSign or online terms and conditions. And then I submit Leo in to this process. Leo now has promised to pay me as a white label partner, 8,500. Again, that could be more or less depending upon how you control the pricing with your clients. We've covered that. But that 8,500 is now a receivable. It's an accounts receivable. It's not due yet, right? Because we told Leo, hey, there's nothing up front, buddy. Nothing up front. We'll collect the refundable deposit after your first tranche. We'll collect the performance fee as each tranche of capital is raised. So I literally know that Leo is going to pay me, assume, pretending that I'm a white label partner, Leo is going to pay me as a white label partner $8,500. Now, don't know the timing exactly of it, but that is an asset. What do we know about raising capital? Sometimes some sources of capital care about collateral. Don't you think that accounts receivable is a collateral? Absolutely. So those of you that are white label partners that are also looking to raise capital, I think some of you overlooked the fact that you're building the balance sheet of your business incredibly quickly. So let's take Mark, one of our top producing white label partners from last month. Now, Mark did something different, and I've disclosed this before, but what Mark has done is he's increased his performance fee from 6%, which is what we normally charge. He charges 20%. 
Now, I didn't recommend that he charges that he charge 20%. And I'm not promoting that to you. I'm just giving you a factual case study of Mark. So what does Mark know that his accounts receivable is per client? Well, there's still that 2,500, but also the clients have agreed to work with him to raise at least 100,000 and they've agreed to pay 20% performance fee after the capital's raised. So for Mark, Mark can put an accounts receivable in his QuickBooks or with his accountant or on his spreadsheet or I guess on his notepad on his iPhone, however Mark's tracking his money, of 22,500. That is an asset. That is an accounts receivable. Now, he did over 40 of those last month, and I forget the number. It was closer to 50, but we're going to round down since I don't have it in front of me. I want to uh, be conservative. He did it more than 40 times. Mark Soul, a real person, a real white label partner, and we can help you do that or better, but, but just using Mark as an example, a real example, Mark generated $900,000 of sales in his first month as a white label partner. Matter of fact, right? It's number of clients based upon the contractual obligation of each client. Now, I'm not lying to you. I'm not saying that he put $900,000 in his bank last month. He didn't. We're talking about how much his receivables are. And so that's 900,000. That's an asset that's going to, he could leverage that asset. Let's talk about a couple of ways that he could leverage that asset the same as you. So as you as a white label partner are enrolling clients, assuming that you're using QuickBooks and or a software like that and or an accountant, you're posting these receivables somewhere. And so then there's a couple of things that you could do. One thing that you can do is you can leverage those receivables as collateral to access capital if you want to get money to, to grow your business or start other businesses or pay off your own debt, however, whatever you want to use money for, because now that's a, that's a true collateral source. Secondly, and, and I mentioned this once before, and a couple of you get really interested, so I wanted to go back. Did you know that you can sell those notes? It's commonly called factory. So if Mark didn't want to wait until his clients paid him that 900,000, did you know that there are companies that will buy those notes? And I know it's true. We're in the process of selling a bunch of notes this week that we're owed. And, and we're not talking about, oh, I might get a couple thousand dollars. I mean, you can literally, literally raise millions of dollars, real money, not pretend money, cash money by selling notes. Well, a lot of people can't sell notes because they don't have any notes to sell. This is the golden ticket, right? So Mark worked with Scott, generated a large number of enrollments in month one, and then now he's got a significant accounts receivable, which isn't as good as cash in hand, but it starts as an accounts receivable. And then he either can collect it over time or he can even sell it. I think this is very powerful because a lot of people are not aware that you can sell notes and we've got buyers now, multiple buyers that are willing to buy notes. Now, what's interesting is there's two types of notes. There are performing notes and non-performing notes. Performing notes means that the client is in good terms, good standing and doing as he or she should. You can sell those notes. Did you know that you can also sell non-performing notes? There are buyers that will buy non-performing notes. So let's, let me give you an example just to make sure this is clear. And I know there's a number of questions here I'll, I'll work on answering in just a second. So with Mark, a real person, a real white label partner that really enrolled, had over 40 conversions last month, his AR ballooned to 900,000. Of course, he doesn't want AR, he wants cash in the bank, but it all starts as AR. So with that, what if every one of those clients just flipped him the bird and said, I quit, Mark, I quit. Do you know that they're still responsible? Now, Mark can make a decision just to release them and let them go. That's power that you have as a, a white label partner. So if you just wanna let clients quit, you can do that. You control their price and you control their terms. 
but we're just talking about from a monetary perspective, let's say that all of those 40 clients just gave Mark the bird and quit. Does that mean that his accounts receivable went to zero for 900,000? No, it's still 900,000. Now the receivables went from performing to non-performing and that's an extreme example. You know, that's not gonna happen, but I'm just showing you the two extremes. So could he still go sell? If every one of those people flipped him the bird and, and now he's sitting on $900,000 from his first month as a white label partner of non-performing notes, is he out of luck? No, no, he can sell those. There are buyers for those because those are true executed agreements. So rather you're a white label partner or you're selling mufflers or making cupcakes, I mean, we need earned income. A lot of people worry about debt and borrowing money. And of course that can help us get started and grow, but earned income is key. And I don't know that you can generate more in earned income more quickly than you can as a white label partner. We'll have clients that come to us on occasion, you know, woe is me, I'm broke, I'm broke. It's like, well, why are you broke? Well, I don't have enough money. Well, what are you doing to fix your money situation? Well, I, I know that they may be working with us to get their loan package built and, and borrow money. But separate from that, what are you doing to earn some income? Well, nothing or not enough. I'm not making enough. Become a freaking white label partner, right? Cost nothing. Generate income, significant income. And, and you don't have to be a mark. You don't have to go generate on, on average two clients per business day. There's 20 business days in a month, which is the, where I get the 40 from. I mean, just, just be minimally productive and just generate two clients a week. Oh, I don't know how to generate clients. Well, that's okay. We've got Scott, our chief marketing officer, CMO, who will help you, help you generate leads, help you market to those leads, help you drip market, save an ongoing campaign. I, I don't know how it gets any better. So you might say, well, how do I monetize this for other people? I know other people that would like to be or could be or should be a white label partner. If I refer them, how much do you guys pay me? We pay you nothing because our model is different, right? So if you know of other people that would like to be a white label partner, what do you do? You partner with them. And I used this example before, but we'll go through it. So let's take um, let's take uh, Peggy, who's on the line. And she is a white label partner, but let's say she's not. So I'd say, hey, Peggy, uh, I'm looking for a business partner, not trying to sell you anything, not going to cost you anything, Peggy, but I'm looking for a business partner to help me administer a grant subsidized access to capital program. It's actually facilitated through a 501c3. It's legitimate, it's credible, but uh, I'm setting up a white label model with them. And I'd love to have you as my managing director. And again, not trying to sell you anything, Peggy, but you could be the managing director of our, our cooperative white label partnership. And uh, what I'll do is I'll, I'll just split the revenue right down the middle with you 50-50. How does that sound? Now, she might say, well, how much money would that be? And we know that there's a training video here. We can't tell you how much you or Peggy or anyone else would make as a white label partner, right? Because you control your own pricing. The extreme example I just gave, which was true, Mark, one of our top producers, he increased the performance fee to a very high 20%. I'm not saying it's too high. And, and he's doing some, he's expanded his value proposition to defend him as well. But the point is, you control how much you make. We don't. You can watch this video and learn uh, how some calculations work. But there's a lot of Peggy's, and again, not real Peggy, but, but uh, there's a lot of people out there that are not earning the income that they want or need or desire. And maybe this isn't the right fit. Maybe they've got some other game plan to go generate an adult income. And if so, hey, let's support them and applaud them. And, and, and maybe they can become one of your clients to, to raise funding for that. But for a lot of people, they haven't figured it out. They don't have that vehicle to hop in to get from where they're at to where they want to be. And so the point is, if you find others that would benefit from being a white label partner, you can collaborate with them and you can frankly grab 50% of their revenue and they do all the work. Okay, so enough about that. I wanna to get to the questions that you have because our primary goal of getting together at this time is supporting our white label partners. You're the ones that's out there enrolling clients, helping clients, taking them through the, the curriculum. You know, there's four modules. 
Uh, you're the ones that's helping them get the soft credit pull so we can get their first tranche of financing right away. And, and you know, that's, that's what we're working with Mark on and, and we'll work with all of you on that are white label partners. Once you have a client come in, now what does that mean? So the client is contracted with you, either using our templates or whatever template you want, because it's between the two of you. And then you've submitted that client here. We set them up, which I've already covered. And I'm sorry, here. And then as soon as possible, as soon as possible, when, as soon as possible, you want to have them complete their soft credit pool. Because the sooner that you do that, the sooner that we can look at what types of funding that they qualify for right now, even before the loan package is built. We call that first tranche financing, right? So you want to do that so soon as possible because we want to get them their first round of funding as soon as possible. Well, that's good for them because they see the models working, but that's awesome for you, right? Because you're going to collect from them the deferred refundable deposit, typically 2,500, but you could make it bigger or, or lower as soon as they've had that first round of funding. And so that's why white label partners can make good money quickly, right? Because if you're on the ball, you submit a client, you get the soft credit pull into us, then we're going to come back to you, not to them, to you and say, let's say it's Bruce. Bruce is one of our white label partners and he's on the line. So Bruce submits a client, client uh, has done their soft credit pull, then we're going to be emailing Bruce. Okay, Bruce, for this client, client A, we recommend funding source B based upon what we see, their mitigating circumstances. So then Bruce will go help client A apply for it. A lot of this first tranche financing, FTF, a lot of this initial funding that we can get up front because we haven't built a loan package yet, a lot of it will fund in less than a week, some of it even less. And so with that being said, that puts money in Bruce's pocket in the white label partner's pocket very quickly. Okay, so let's scroll up to the top and then let's start working through your questions or concerns. So Zahn says, once you recommend funding to us, uh, that's funny, so that's exactly what we're talking about. So Zahn asks, once you recommend funding to us for the client, how should we introduce the client to the lender or lenders? Well, we'll look at, at the data we have and let's scroll back down. We could either have one data set or two data sets from the client based upon what you've done with them so far. Certainly we should have the soft credit pull, which will tell us, because what, what, what do we all know? Let's re re recite the three C's. If someone wants to borrow money, whether it's through our model or any other model, what are the three C's to be able to qualify for debt? You have to have at least one of the three C's, credit, cash flow, or collateral, at least one of the three. Well, with the soft pull, we can assess credit and cash flow. We really need the personal financial statement to better understand their collateral, and you may or may not have provided that at this point. But regardless, with the soft credit pull, we can make some, draw some conclusions about their cash flow and credit worthiness to make a recommendation. We'll use that to make a re recommendation to you, Zon, and then you're going to take action on it. Then you're going to go back to the client because a white label partner, you're controlling the client interaction. Then you're going to go back to the client and instruct them to follow those steps, which is usually very simple. Now, keep in mind, you're managing the client relationship. So we could come to you Zon and say, well, we recommend funding source X. And you might come back and say, no, no. And we'd say, okay, well then, then why? And, and, and what, what's your perspective on it? So the point is we're not forcing any type of funding on the client and it's all ran through you. So you're controlling the relationship. So hopefully that answered the first part of your question, Zon. Let me get to the second. Ah, very good. So on the deposit, so by design, the access to capital has no upfront cost. There's a refundable deposit set up after the first capital raise. But it's true, as on is, is referencing, you control that. So do you want that deposit to be refundable or not refundable? That's up to you. Do you want to apply that to their performance fees? Usually not. Those are two different items. But frankly, you can handle it however you want, Zon. It's, it's up to you. You control the client's agreement in terms and conditions. All right, so Dion says, uh, 
when it comes to the refundable 2,500, okay, yeah. So with the white label partner, it is up to you, Dion, uh, how you wanna set up pricing. And an element of that is the initial deposit. So there's no upfront cost for the access to capital model, including white label, we should be consistent with that. But the deposit that they pay in after their first tranche could be refundable or non-refundable. And it could be 2,500, could be less, could be more. That, that is truly up to you. You're controlling that. And then secondly, Dion asks about yeah, clients who don't pay. And some clients won't pay. You know, many will, most will probably but we have the system in place to back you up. So if you have a, a client that doesn't pay, uh, we can assist you with that. And we have both a law firm on retainer, and we also have a collection agency on retainer, and we can also sell that debt. And I know that sounds crazy, but it's, it's real. Even if that client stiffs you, so it's what we call non-performing debt. There are debt buyers that will buy that. And so you've got several options if the client tries to, to stiff you. All right, so are there any other questions that we have for this morning's training? My primary goals were to, again, just clarify that the white label program is a great option for many. It may or may not be right for you. Um, regardless of that, if you know others that would benefit, you can leverage this and, and essentially carve off 50% of the revenue from the white label side. So 25% of the total revenue can just go directly in your pocket. We did, a, I think, a good summary of, of the benefits of the white label partnership, which includes you control the client relationship. We illustrated again where some of the key training is and how Scott Stroud, our chief marketing officer, is available to help you generate leads, convert leads, drip market to leads, help you take your agreement, which you need. We really, 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 really recommend you have written agreements with your clients. I guess you don't have to. And again, we've provided the templates, but Scott can help you get those into a variety of different formats, DocuSign, Adobe, online terms and conditions, so forth. And uh, we also talked about, the, uh, in brief, the educational curriculum. We didn't go too deep into that. Okay, so uh, Leo's got a couple clients. Uh, that, that he's enrolled. That's right, Leo. So once you've enrolled a couple clients, which, which you've done, then ultimately what you're trying to do, Leo, is get their loan package populated. So here are the, the documents, if applicable, not everyone has everything, because when we set them up, remember, we set up a Dropbox folder, we pay for that. And we've talked about that a couple times here. So you have, Leo, their Dropbox folders, so you can a little or a lot help them improve their financial literacy with these modules. That's up to you. That's between you and them. But ultimately what you're trying to do, well, first we need to get the refundable deposit collected. So let me restate. Leo's asking, okay, once I've enrolled a client, what then? So what I should have said first is our first priority is to get their soft credit pull done and let's get them their first tranche of financing as soon as possible right? How much could that be? Could be a little, could be a lot. It depends upon their circumstances. But what it's going to do is it's going to fund the refundable deposit and put 2,500 or more or less, whatever your price in your pocket. So that's first priority, Leo. So if you've not helped them do their soft credit polls, that is number one priority. Once we've done that, and they've paid their refundable deposit, then it's time to build their loan package. So we normally don't work on the loan package which is putting these documents in, some of which, of course, we're helping them develop. But, but we don't work on this until they've paid their refundable deposit. And you might say, well, you said there's no upfront cost. Well, there's not. When they enroll in the access to capital, we don't collect any money from them upfront. But what we do is help them get their first tranche of financing, which starts with a soft credit pull as soon as possible. They get funded, and then you invoice them, and they pay you the refundable deposit. Great questions. 
But keep in mind, we're here to support you. And in general, the way that it works is Scott, our chief marketing officer, which is Scott at smartmoneyalliance.org, our CMO introduced in this second training video down. He's going to help you generate the leads, convert the leads, uh, help you on the front end. And then once the client is in the system, which means you submitted them here, then you and I will work with uh, together on the clients. So uh, generating the clients, the front end, you're going to work with Mark, doesn't cost you anything. And then once the client's submitted, then you and I will work together. And we're actually hiring some additional staff on August 1st as we grow. All right, and then Tyree's asking about the onboarding document. Yes, uh, we had, we're getting ready to, to revise that, but I will include that in the, the circulation of today's training. We had a training on that a little while back. So specifically what Tyree is referencing for everyone's benefit, starting July 1st, we changed our onboarding. Well, let me rephrase that. As of July 1st, we changed how we implemented new access to capital clients, not impacting white label because you do your own onboarding on the white label. But what that meant is that we created a simple one page guide to guide people through getting off to a good start. And that's what Tyree is asking for. What, what, why don't we do this Tyree? How about tomorrow's training will focus on that so it's not so convoluted. So tomorrow we'll go through the onboarding document We'll talk about how each of you might want to edit it if you're a white label partner like you are, Tyree. So uh, give us 24 hours and we'll make that our topic tomorrow. I'll shuffle the calendar around and we'll go through that tomorrow. All right. Well, thanks, everyone. Let's get out there and get active. If you're not a white label partner, we encourage you to become one. It is free and easy to do so. Uh, the link is back here on the website. Click here and you'll be able to get signed up in less than two minutes. We'll have you up and operating. Uh, typically within 24 hours. Thanks everyone, see you tomorrow, have a good day.